of us, some of us love to take the simple and make it complex. Some of us thrive on taking perfectly obvious matters and making them as obscure as possible. My neighbor's car has on it a bumper sticker that says, Eschew Obfuscation. <laughs> After spending about a half hour in the dictionary, it simply means keep it simple. <laughs> Just try to pronounce it more than once. Last week I reflected on a discouraged church as is shown in Haggai. People could easily be discouraged, especially today. You know, as you watch the news and see how the church is being persecuted around the world. And I, I'm sure you've seen what's happening. Maybe some of you haven't, but as you watch the news of the Middle East especially, you'll notice countries like Iraq, Syria, Nigeria. And I know China's not in the Middle East, but country, a little country called Qatar <coughs> and Iran. Many other places. And I just want to take a minute on Iran. Chris talked to me about two weeks ago, and he says, Dad, we had the, what used to be the general superintendent of the Assemblies of God in Iran in his service uh, just a couple weeks ago, and as he shared, before the country was taken over, the church was running in the thousands, roughly 10,000 is what was known to be as Christians in Iran. After the overthrow of the regime, in, in Iran, there's now literally, through persecution, there's literally over 2 million yeah. believers in the country of Iran. Yeah. Yes. Though they can try to chase yes. Christianity out, yes. is what you're seeing happen now. The church is growing and mushrooming. Yes. Now, I'm not asking for persecution in the world. But that's what's happened in the country of Iran. Christians are being held and they're being told to convert or die. And we need to hold the church up in prayer around the world. The word I used last week is the Lord Sabaoth. The one who is sovereign over all the powers and forces that exist on earth and in heaven, the one who does as he will among the armies of heaven and the inhabitants of the earth. So my question to you this morning is this. What does God want to do through you and through the church? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me at Jerusalem, and all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. That word witness. When I read that word, I think of telling people about Jesus. When you think of our court system, you think of you're being called as a witness to tell about what you've seen and what you've heard. But the Greek word translated here from one source goes something like this. Witness means martyr. Mm -hmm. One who bears witness by his death. A soldier for Christ. Those who have died to their old life. Pretty extreme, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To learn the real translation and the real meaning of witness. When you look at it that way, it brings new meaning to the words, but you shall receive power. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need the strength that our God can give us. And I must say, I hope 
I don't scare anyone away this morning by talking that way. And by putting the scripture directly how it's meant. Yeah. Just plain and straight. To be a Christian, as we read in the book of Acts, means to be totally committed. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, I went into the Corner Cafe at Redway. It's too bad Shirley's not here right now because she was waitressing there. And the proprietor that attended was attending the Baptist church at that time. I walk in and sit down to have breakfast. And he comes up to me and says, I just can't believe that pastor. He was talking about commitments. <laughs> I go, oh boy. He's having a fun breakfast. <laughs> commitments. Acts chapter 5 verse 40 says, they called for the apostles and then they beat them. And then commanded them not to speak in the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 16, verses 22 and 23 says, They commanded the apostles to be beaten and threw them into prison. Mm -hmm. yep. And what I read in the book of Acts, and what the Christians went through at that day and age, I don't see a whole lot of difference between what they went through and what many Christians are going through in this world today. A word... I would use to characterize the early church is that word, commitment. Now, I don't question people's commitment to Christ when they tell me they're a Christian. I don't question that. Because that's an issue between them and God. However, I have a lot about, I hear a lot about wanting a church like the book of Acts. And you can't have a church like the book of Acts without that word commitment in it. Mm -hmm. So the first big thing Jesus speaks to us in the book of Acts is this. You shall be witnesses. And you remember what that word means. It says you shall be witnesses. When we see the word witness, it usually scares people. Responses are usually, but I can't do that, Pastor. That's just not me. But I'm here to tell you that you can do that. You can share the gospel. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy to help in time of need. Now, if we can come boldly before God, we can ask Him for the strength and the power to press on in life and to face whatever challenge we may have. Amen. And I know some of you are facing some real challenges, personal challenges in your life right now. And then we should also be able to come with a bold witness for Christ. That is, we are to speak up and not be silent. And with that same boldness, we should show Christ's love to and for others. Amen. First John chapter 3, verse 1 says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. That word bestowed is given to us. That love that God has given to us Think about that, the love that he has shared with us. He has given us his love. He has demonstrated his love for us. And we are called the children of God. Two things here. A bold witness and a genuine love for people. Amen. Mm -hmm. there we go. This has been the hallmark of Christianity for generations. When he says here to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth, basically what he's saying is this. I want you to be my witness wherever you go. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are, you can be my witness. I've heard stated a lot, of, a lot lately that worship is a lifestyle. 
You live your life in worship to God. And you lift your voice in worship to God. In like manner, your life is a living witness to God. Do you have to stand up and preach? No. But what's your life preaching? Do you have to stand up and, and in front of a crowd, which you'd be petrified at doing? So you need to get saved? You need, need to give your heart to the Lord? No. But what's your life saying? 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians, chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, and then U International Version says, you yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by everybody. How many of you know that? Mm -hmm. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the results of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Let God write on your hearts His Word. Mm -hmm. Let God write on your hearts what He wants you to show out, what He wants you to express to the world. So what kind of a book are you writing this morning? What kind of a book is your life writing to the people around you? What kind of book are you writing for this community? What are people reading from your book? The book of Craig, the book of Florence, the book of Linda, the book of Rick. No, those aren't found in the Bible here. I almost said Mark, but I did not. But I, I said Mark, and I might think I was referring to. <laughs> Jesus. What kind of a book are you writing? What kind of book are you writing for the community to see? What are people reading from your book? Live your life boldly for Christ. You may never know who is reading your book. I got a brief letter this past week. Said, amongst other things, we appreciate your being a spiritual leader in this community. This is a person that, to my knowledge, has never stepped foot in the church. <coughs> I have never said a word about Christ to them, not one word. But yet they acknowledged and they recognized the book that Christ is writing in my life. I asked the question, what does God want to do through you? He wants to use you. You are his mouthpiece. He wants you to be a bold witness for him. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, the second portion of that verse says, For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. When you're having a hard time, remember that. God is still with you. He's walking through your situation in life with you. The last verse I want to share with you on witnessing is in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. It says, go into all the world. Yes. Preach the gospel to every creature. Mm -hmm. And I want to focus just on one word there. It's a little short word. It's go. <laughs> go. <laughs> just to remind you, if you're worried about that word that says preach, then go and live your life as a living witness for Christ. Go and spread the love of God. Go and speak boldly about what God has done for you. The next area I want us to look at is prayer. And I know I've spent time on prayer, a lot of time on prayer over the past few years. 
But after Jesus spoke to the apostles about witnessing, he then ascended to heaven, and then in verse 14 it says, These all continued with one accord in prayer. This in itself is one of the best examples we have of living a life with Christ. The book of Acts is a great example of what can happen when we as a church pray. <coughs> I shared with someone just recently that is going through some very difficult times in their life. And I was encouraging them to, to lift them up, letting them know that I'd be praying for them, that God would lift them up, and that God would strengthen them. And the response was, can we do that now? <laughs> so we bowed our heads and prayed right then and there. Did I have to push myself into a door? Did I have to come over here and bang on this door to say, you know, this is what we need to do or this is what you need to do in your life? No. It was welcome because of the living testimony. Verse 14 was uses two words that I really like. They are one accord. When God's people come together with a common goal, a common purpose, you will see things happen in your life and in the church that you wouldn't believe could ever happen. One of you shared a verse God gave you for something that you're going through. That verse is found in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 30 in the New International Version. It reads something like this. How could one man chase a thousand or two put 10,000 to flights? I want you to look at it this way. In Christ, we can do anything. When two of us agree in his name, our spiritual battles become easier because we are joined together in one accord with another believer. One person can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. Can you imagine how much we can accomplish as a church if all of us that are here this morning were in complete one accord. And as we look at that concept, I get more and more excited as to what God is doing and what God will do through us right here in Southern Humboldt. And in my mind, as I was reading that scripture, 1,000, 10,000, and I'm thinking, what's the population of Southern Humble? <laughs> and then I'm going, wow, it's not going to take much for us to conquer the spiritual warfare that has to go on here at Southern Humble. <laughs> as just the people within this church, if you use biblical math, joined together in one accord, the strongholds of Satan in this area have to fall. Can you see it happening? I'm looking for souls to be saved. And I've been excited over the last few years how many have gave their heart to the Lord. And how many people have recommitted their lives saying, God, I know I have, I'm a Christian, but I just need to commit my life to service of you. I was reading that just through the Assemblies of God, there is a new convert somewhere in the world every 25 seconds. And a new church is started every 39 minutes somewhere in this world. And it's exciting when we are in one accord what you can see happen. That's just through the assemblies. That's not about all of the other churches that are in missions work around the world. If you 
want to see God moving in your life. If you want to see God moving in this church, you cannot be a couch Christian. I thought you'd like that. Two phrases stand out to me in the book of Acts. And they prayed. And when they prayed. Prayer. Being in one accord, things happen. In Acts, these are some of the things that they prayed for. In Acts, we see people pray for themselves, pray for others, pray for their enemies. They pray for guidance. They pray for healing. They pray for wisdom. And they pray for their leaders. And these are some of the places that they prayed in. They prayed in the streets. They prayed in their houses. They prayed on the shore. They prayed on rooftops. They prayed in a boat. And they prayed in a temple. And I am convinced that prayer in one accord is essential for a growing church. I'm going to tell you something as I look out. We are a growing church. One of the reasons there is people committed to praying, not only for me, but for this community and for one another. I'm excited about that. I'm encouraged with that. But the rest of us that may not be committed in that area, commit with us to begin to pray for your brothers, your sisters, your family, praying for the community. Let me return to my question this morning. What does God want to do through you and through this church? He wants you to be a bold witness for him, and he wants us to be united in prayer. He wants us to be in one accord in prayer. I want to encourage you this morning to press on. Don't be discouraged if something may not be going right in your life. God is our strength. He is our fortress. He's the ever-present help in the time of need. Let your light shine for the world to see. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I am so grateful for what you are doing in this community, Lord. God, you're making a mark in people's lives. The organizations that would have never acknowledged Christ, or have never acknowledged what you're doing in this community, you are making a mark. And they're looking and standing up saying, I know what that church is doing. God, I thank you for that. That's only done through you. It's only done because you are moving in people's hearts and lives. God, I thank you for that. That excites me. And it makes me just anticipate so much more what you're going to continue to do and how we are going to continue to grow in you, Lord. I thank you for that, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen.